So blockchain domains, or NFT domains, or crypto domains, or Web3 domains, they can be called by many different names, but they all mean the same thing. It's domains that can be used on the blockchain and that can be bought and sold as NFTs. If you've spent any amount of time recently in the NFT community, I'm sure that you have already seen them. It's those domains that end in .eth or in .crypto, and they can often be seen on Twitter because people use them as their name next to their profile picture. And maybe you also have heard of all the big sales that are already taking place, like for example the most famous Paradigm.eth that sold for one and a half million dollars. And maybe you are also thinking of investing in blockchain domains or you are already investing in blockchain domains. In either case, I recommend you to watch this video because this video is all about how people are making a lot of money with blockchain domains. Hello, I'm Matt Garcia and I write books and very long tweet threads about NFTs. But in today's video, we are not going to talk about what I think about NFT domains or what strategies I think are good for making money with NFT domains. If you are interested in my personal views, I will be putting out another video soon about the types of blockchain domains that I think are being overlooked by the market and that represent very good buying opportunities. Also, if you are interested in my personal views, you can look at my portfolio on OpenSea and see what types of domains I buy. But for this first video on NFT domains, I wanted to have zero opinions and zero theories. This video is pure data, based on pure data, about what is selling right now and not what I think that will sell in the future. So let's dive right into it. To make this video, I have collected the data of every big sale from the past four months. I've considered a big sale any domain selling for more than one ETH. Taking into account that you can register a domain for about $100 to $200, depending on gas, and that one ETH currently is in the $4 to $5,000 range, selling at one ETH would represent a 30x return, which is an amazing return for any kind of investment. For the domains ending in .eth, that is the domain sold by ENS domains, I've sourced the data from the ENS sales bot created by Griffin. For the domains ending in .crypto, that is the domain sold by Unstoppable domains, I have used the sales data available on OpenSea. Apart from these one ETH or above sales from the past four months, I've also added some very big sales of both .eth and .crypto that took place before July, but which are also useful to include to have more big sale data to analyze. In total, I collected data from 388 sales, and in this video I will analyze them by five criteria. One, number of characters in the domain. Two, number of words in the domain. Three, is the domain a singular or a plural word? Four, what type of word the domain is? Is it a noun, an adjective, a number, an emoji, a verb? And five, and probably the most useful of the criteria, what type of name is it? Is it an existing brand? Is it a monetizable term or phrase? Is it an art term or a first name or a nickname, etc.? Number one, number of characters. These are the 388 sales classified by the number of characters the domain had. And here comes the first big surprise. Although three character domains are considered the most valuable, the winner by number of sales is the domains with six characters. With 78 sales in our sample, the six character domains represented 20% of the big sales. They were closely followed by four character domains with 80% of the sales. But the so coveted three character domains were only in the fourth position by number of sales. If we look at this same data as a pie chart, we can also notice something interesting. The great majority of sales took place in the 8 to 3 character range. These domains represented 80% of all the sales. So it is evident that if you want to make big domain sales, you better avoid domains of 9 letters or more, unless they are very, very good. 2. Number of words. At present, Web3 domain users and Web3 domain investors are obsessed with getting single word domains, and that makes sense because they are indeed the most valuable. But how prevalent single word domains really are among the big sales? Well, as you can see here, in our sample there were zero sales of domains containing more than three words, only eight sales of three word domains, and the bulk of the sales were of two and one word domains. 
So after removing the non-applicable, that is domains like emojis or numbers, these are the resulting proportions. Only 3% of the big sales were three-word domains, 11 were two-word domains, and a massive 85% were one-word domains. So the take-home message here is that if you want to make big sales, you better focus on one-word domains or on very good two-word combos. And really, stay away from three words or more unless they are extremely, extremely iconic or extremely short. Number three, singular versus plural. For this criteria, I've left out as non-applicable the majority of domains. For example, I haven't considered the Christian names or the family names or the brands because all those only have one correct form and the decision for you as a domain investor is obvious. So I've only considered the generic words like cars or books, in which an investor really needs to make a decision about whether to buy the singular or the plural form. Car would be the perfect example of this conundrum. Should I buy car, which is more iconic, or should I buy cars, which would be better suited for a business trying to sell cars? So for this type of words, we can see that the majority of the big buyers prefer to buy singular forms like car or book but also a non-negligible 21% opted for the plural form, probably because for some business ideas, a plural form makes more sense than a singular, despite the singular being more iconic. So the take home message here is that if you are going to buy a generic word or a generic phrase, think about the use case, think about the type of business that could be built around that term and whether the singular or the plural is more appealing for that particular use case. Number four, word type. This criterion is something that you may have never thought about because we make this type of decision instinctively. But not all words are made equal. For example, Peter, Microsoft, Smith, Cucumber, all have in common that they are nouns. And nouns are in fact by far the most common type that I found among the big sales. After taking out things that don't have a word type like emoji domains and number domains, this is the resulting chart. As you can see, the great majority of sales were indeed nouns, with more than three quarters of the total. Nouns were followed by acronyms, because there are so many popular acronyms in the crypto world, like HODL or DAP or gonna make it. Then came adjectives, with 13 sales, like purple, green, sad, poor. Then the verbs, with 11 sales in total, one of them a very high profile one, was wink.crypto, which is the most expensive dot .crypto sale ever made. Then the prefixes like echo, hyper, mid, giga, with five sales in total. Then the interjections, which with only four sales happen rarely, but which tend to be very iconic. Yep, he he, whatever, and thanks. Finally, there was only one pronoun among the big sales. It was she.eth which sold, however, for a very handsome 5 Ethereum, equivalent to $22,000 on the day of the sale. Number five, purchasing reason. This last criterion is the most useful for domain investors because it allows to understand what pushes people to buy expensive domains. This was extremely time consuming to research because I had to go domain by domain investigating what was the real reason behind each acquisition. So I hope that the effort pays off and this data helps you make better domain investing decisions. Okay, so after analyzing the purchasing reasons for the 388 sales, I found 25 different categories of reasons. You can see them on this table. From the top selling reason that I've called iconic emoji and which it alone represented 40% of all the big sales to the worst selling one that I've called iconic letter repeat and which had only one sale. But showing the data with so much granularity prevents to see the forest for the trees. So I further grouped these 25 purchasing reasons into four supergroups that you can see here. Brands, identity, terms, and iconic. Let's look at them one by one. Brands is self-evident. Here the purchasing reason was simply the popularity of an existing brand name. The buyers of these expensive domains were either the brands themselves or other domain investors expecting to flip these names when Web3 domains become more mainstream. Inside this group, we have tech brands like Pornhub, 
pure crypto brands like the crypto exchange Didix, general brands like the National Hockey League, and also a new type of brand, NFT collections, like for example, Art Blocks Curated. For the terms supergroup, the purchasing reason is that the word or phrase was an important term in a particular field of activity. For example, classic art would be an art term, e-sports would be a tech term, way would be a crypto term, and so on. The next supergroup is the iconic supergroup, and this is the most successful of all four, with as much as 40% of all the sales. Under iconic, I've grouped all the purchasing reasons that were more about collectability than about functionality. That is, words that, unlike the previous discussed terms, don't have an obvious use case, but which are nevertheless very common words or very common symbols, and that makes them somewhat iconic and desirable. An example of an iconic domain would be carrot. It's not impossible to use carrot to create a business around it, of course, but in principle, its value is more about how well known this particular dictionary word is than about its business potential. So the main buying reason for the domains in this iconic group is pure collecting. It is treating domains as if they were another collectible token. And in fact, I always say that in NFT land, anything that is collectible will be collected. We NFT folk are like a plague of locusts that can collect away anything that crosses our path. In this group, we have many subcategories, pure number domains like 2345, emoji domains like the triple bird emoji, geographical domains like Sri Lanka, general dictionary words like sweatpants, general dictionary words that nevertheless also have business potential like win, and general dictionary words that also have a high nickname potential like drifter. Interestingly enough, Geographical domains are still insignificant in sales, with only two sales across the entire sample. On the other extreme are the emoji domains, that are the best selling category within the iconic supergroup. By the way, there have been rumors that maybe some of the emoji domain sales were in reality was trade sales, and actually I can confirm that at least one of the emoji domain sales was in reality a wash trade because I was looking deep into it and really the transactions looked very suspicious. But also I can confirm that some of the emoji domain sales were real and for example two different people offered me 5 Ethereum for my triple eye of horrors domain so uh, I know that positively there are real money out there uh, trying to scoop uh, emoji domains. But anyway, it's always a good idea to do your own research and your due diligence before jumping into buying and selling domains. The fourth and last supergroup is the identity group. This comprises all the purchasing reasons that were connected to the identity of individuals. In these cases, the big sale was made either to a person who has that first name, like Tegan.eth, which sold to Web3 guru Tegan Klein, first name fragments like Bert.eth, sold to angel investor Robert Miller, existing nicknames like KingKai.eth, sold to NFT influencer King Kai, existing nickname fragments like Coco, sold to NFT investor Coco Bear, or famous crypto artist names like Miss Al Simpson. Interestingly, non-techy celebrity names were relatively rare, which proves how early we still are in terms of mainstream visibility for Web3. Finally, let's look for a minute at a pie chart of the four supergroups. We can see an interesting feature of the sales. Despite people thinking that by far the main purchasing reason for Web3 domains is identity, be it brand identity or individual identity, we see that more than half of the big purchases were made for iconic and field-specific term reasons, and not for ID reasons. This means that although Web3 domains are still not natively supported by our current web browsers, many buyers are already betting on a future in which these browsers will surrender and offer native support for Web3 websites, or a future in which new Web3-friendly browsers will be adopted by crypto consumers, and so, building a business and a website around a Web3 domain like nftmarketcap.eth, wim.crypto or esports.eth will be very lucrative. 
This also shows that collectability is also a super important purchasing reason for NFT domains, and that NFT domains, apart from functional tokens, are also collectible tokens. In summary, business potential, brand and individual identity, and collectability, that's what big buyers have in their minds when they pay big money for Web3 domains. So that's it. That's all for today. If you want to have an even closer look at all the data that I have discussed in this video, it's also available on my website and it's free, so you can find it there. Also, if you enjoy this type of content, subscribe to my channel because I will be uh, creating more content like this. Also, you can follow me on Twitter where sometimes I tweet about things that I think that are profitable and that people are not paying attention to. Uh, and well thank you so much for having watched this video and take care of yourself and see you soon bye